Welcome to Python Beginner 3, Import and Output. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can interact with our Python program on the command line. Python makes this very easy for us, providing us with simple, easy to use functions. This is input, raw input, and print. This lets, lets us make our output look nice. We've used the main output function already, print. During this video, we'll look at how custom customizing our output to the prompt to make it look nicer and better to read. First, let's have a quick look at making our out output nicer. In our interpreter, we can create a variable called name. Let's set it to our name. Now, with our variable called name, we can print it out nicely. So let's add two strings together to make our output look nicer. So let's open up our inter Python interpreter and make name equal our name. Now we can print out a hard-coded string, so hello, my name is, space, open quotes, and we use the plus symbol to add a variable into that string. So we're adding name into our string, hello my name is, plus our name. So we print that out, you'll notice that it adds the value of our variable to the end of our string. Now, this allows for much more dynamic code, because this allows for our variable name to change throughout our program, rather than having to write print every time we need, need to. Now, let's have a look at getting some input from the user. There's two main functions to get input in Python, input and raw input. We're going to look at using raw input first. So let's set our variable called name to the user's input. Name equals raw underscore input open brackets and inside the brackets we can put a prompt to ask the user. So let's make it please enter your name and we close the brackets off. Now when we hit enter on this, it'll pop up with a prompt asking us to enter our name. Let's enter in our name, let's do something like Jeff. Now, if we print out our variable now, print name, you'll notice that it's been set to what we entered in early, earlier. Okay. Now, let's start looking at the input function. So, Python also has an input function. This, unlike raw input, which always assumes you're entering a string, input, the input function tries to turn the user's input into code. This, this is why we avoid using input, unless for some reason we require it. So let's have a quick look at what happens if we use input instead of raw input. So let's make name equal input, open brackets, and we'll use the same prompt, please enter your name, and then we'll put closing brackets. Now if we enter something like Fred, it will crash our program, because Fred is not defined. So this is mostly why we don't use input because it tries to turn everything into code which means it can be used for malicious intent okay so since we've been using the interpreter for quite a while let's get to the true power of coding with python let's create our first program file now open up your favorite text editor and cr we're creating a file called toot 3.py. Make sure you use the .py extension on your file, otherwise Python will not know that it's a Python file. Okay, let's add some instructions similar to the ones we wrote before. So I'm going to use Vim. If you, if you haven't installed this, then look up how to install it. Okay, so Vim. 2.3.py 
and this will open up Vim and let's start writing some instructions okay so we can write more than one line now in our program and it will execute line after line so let's create a variable name and make it equal to raw underscore input open brackets please enter your name close brackets now if we go down to the next line it doesn't execute it because it's in a file and we can put down our next statement that we want to execute so let's then print out print hello uh, close quotes and then we'll add a plus name and then another plus open up the quotes a comma thank you for using my first program and then we'll close quotes on that now let's save our program and we're going to write and we're going to run it sorry let's write quit and now to run our program we type python and then the file name so two three dot pi now you'll notice it asks me for my name I'll enter in draps hello draps thank you for using my first program as you can see this is where the strength is in python writing the actual script files because it allows for execution of commands one after the other rather than having to sit at the uh, at the Python interpreter and enter in one command at a time. Now, while this is cool, oh, and one other thing to note, if you're running on Windows, right click on your file in, in the idle and hit open. You can then open up your file, that you, your Python file, and then hit run in the module. Okay, now let's create something a little bit more useful. Let's edit our shoot 3. So, let's write a multiplying program. So let's, let's edit our toot 3pi and we'll get two numbers from the user and times them together and output the answer to the console. Okay, so vim toot 3pi now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to get a number one and a number two. So let's let's first print out welcome. So print welcome to multiply. Okay, so we're printing out a welcome message for people who just run our program. And now let's get our first number from the user. So num1 equals raw input. So because we want to get a number, we've got to cast raw input from a string into an integer. Because remember, raw input always gets a string from the user. So to, to cast that, what we do is we type int, open brackets, and that gets us our integer so we just have to make sure we close the brackets at the end so this gets out a number one now this um, if we enter a string into our integer it will now break because we're expecting an integer so in a later tutorial I'll show you how to avoid this but for now we'll just stick to the rules okay now let's enter in our second number num2 equals int open brackets raw underscore input open brackets please enter your second number we also have to edit our first string so please enter your first number okay now let's let's print out the answer Okay, to print out the answer, 
we can use our times operator that we learnt uh, in the last tutorial. So let's do num1 times num2. And that's our program done. Now we can save and we can run. So let's right quit and python 23.py please enter your first number okay let's do five please enter your second number let's do six the answer is 30 cool so this is our first useful program now we have a program that can do multiplication for us even though we have a calculator on our computer this is a great display of how useful input can be this concludes our look at input and output in Python. Don't fear if you don't remember all of this, you can easily come back and rewatch this video to consolidate all the information. If you have any questions and you can't find the answer on Google after a quick search, feel free to leave them in the comments. Next we'll be covering selection. Thanks for watching.